Today's episode is brought to you by Nomad. Go to the Flathead's best manufacturer, Nomad is a longtime supporter of the local community and sports scene, celebrating 20 years of building great careers in mission focused custom vehicles. Nomad, a Montana based company making a global impact. Visit nomadgcs.com for more info. That's nomadgcs.com for more information. Welcome back to this week's episode of the Interlake Sports Now. I'm Josh Dugan, and I hope everyone had a safe and happy 4th of July last week, and everyone is staying cool with this heat wave, heat wave we've been going through. That being said, there was a little rain earlier today, so we'll definitely take that. Everyone stay hydrated. So today we're going to get caught up on some headlines the last couple weeks. As last week, we were out at Brock Osweiler football camp covering that action, so didn't do our typical show. That was a fun one. But today, we're getting back to the headlines. We're going to recap the 85th Annual Earl Hunt Memorial Golf Tournament in Whitefish last weekend, as well as take a look at the John R. Hart Baseball Tournament in town that was hosted by the Kalispell Lakers. We're going to close this thing out with a recap as well of how the Valley's pro baseball team, the Glacier Range Riders, fared over the last couple weeks. So let's start this thing out with a quick recap of that golf action I mentioned. The 85th Annual Earl Hunt Memorial 4th of July Golf Tournament took place at Whitefish Lake Golf Club last weekend with Joey Moore Billings out dueling Andrew Medley out of Scottsdale, Arizona in a sudden death playoff to take home the title. This was Moore's third time winning the tournament after taking home the title in 2017 and 2021. Medley previously won the tournament title in 2012 and 2016. As for the ladies, Buttes, Patricia Joyce took home the title after winning the championship flight by 10 strokes. Joyce has spent the last four years golfing for the University of Montana. Cora Rosanova of Bozeman and J.C. Acharya of Columbus tied for second at 8 over 223. Acharya, that's two-time defending champion, shot a 75 Saturday. Rosanova, who won this event in 2020, fired a 76. Glacier High product Tegan Avery was fourth at 224, while Flyhead High graduate Marcella Mercer was fifth at 227. My apologies for any names I botched there. Just rolling right now. Let's get it going. Overall, just a fun event, no doubt about it. I didn't happen to make it out there this year, but last year I was out there covering the event for a little bit, and just one of those feel-good events, good vibes, Shout out Whitefish Lake Golf Club for putting on a great event in the local area that is loaded with great golfers from all over. So overall, just great for the community, great for the golf scene. Hey, not a bad way to spend your 4th of July weekend or post 4th of July weekend, I should say. Let's get into the Hart Baseball Tourney. Let's get to some Legion Baseball action here in the Valley. So the Kalispell A-Lakers defended their home turf by winning the championship game at the John R. Hart Tournament here in uh, Kalispell hosted by the Lakers. The A-Lakers beat the Inland Empire Astros from Hayden, Idaho, 8-3 Sunday at Griffin Field in that championship game. Hunter Fan came up clutch for the Lakers, hitting a bases-loaded triple in the second inning to set the tone for Kalispell. Lakers starting pitcher Jackson Hino went 5-1 and one third innings while striking out six, and Kale Brink took over in relief to close things out for the Lakers. The Lakers went 4-0 overall at the tournament to move to 35-13 and 13 on the season. Overall, that's a solid record, no doubt about it. Fan was named the tournament's most valuable player for his stellar play over the weekend, so kudos to Hunter Fan and the Kalispell A Lakers on winning their hometown John R. Harp tournament. No doubt about it, it's got to feel good on your home turf, take home the win, and defend that home turf. All right, got some exciting prep football recruiting news related to the local area. We missed this headline. This was a couple weeks ago by Glaciers. Cash Gochea committed to the Grizz to play football. University of Montana gets a good one here. So Gochea announced his commitment to play football for the University of Montana via Twitter on June 29th. Gochea is entering his senior season, and he played nine games last season for the Pack. He carried the ball 32 times for 250 yards and five touchdowns. He tacked on one more receiving touchdown and brought home a pick six. So overall, just one of those guys, offensively, defensively, Special teams, he makes an impact when he touches the ball. Look out, play Baker. He is a UM, UM legacy player as his father, Sean, played safety for the Grizz in the 90s. Gochea had the following to say on Twitter. I'm super excited to announce my commitment to the University of Montana. He tweeted, I'm very thankful for all my family, teammates, and coaches who have helped me along the way. Go Grizz. One of those kids whose athleticism jumps out off the charts when you watch 
Glacier play made out to quite a few Glacier games last year. They played them all over the place, had an impact on special teams. So no idea really where the Grizz are going to implement Gochea moving forward. When the time comes, he's just going to, you know, he's got his senior year ahead of him. So see if he establishes himself more at one position. But overall, one of those guys who's just an athlete, going to make plays and can make an impact on either side of the football. So you got to think the Grizz got a good one and a legacy commit. So you got to love that. So Let's take a quick second to thank Nomad GCS for helping make the Interlake Sports Now possible. You can learn more from the team at Nomad GCS at nomadgcs.com. All right, thanks again to the team at Nomad. Now let's get to another headline we missed last week to, due to that special edition of the show that I mentioned. So that headline is an exciting one for Northwest Montana football fans or just Montana football fans in general. Libby product Dan Rambo was inducted into the Montana Professional Football Hall of Fame as a support inductee for his front office work in professional football Rambo graduated from Libby in 1970, and after carrying the football for the Loggers, he played college football at Carroll. Rambo was selected to the Hall of Fame for his contributions to pro football. Over 23 seasons, he was the general manager of the CFL's Rough Riders from 1983 to 1990 and 1994 to 1997, and had the same job with Ottawa from 91 to 92. Also spent 1990 in the scouting operations for the World Football League and was a regional scout for the NFL's Denver Broncos from 1998 to 2006. And this was noted by 406sports.com that after starring at Libby, Rambo was a three-time first-team all-frontier conference selection at Carroll, and he averaged an NAIA best 152 yards per game in 1974. He finished with a school record 2,695 yards rushing, and he did receive NFL tryouts with the Broncos, Giants, Packers, and Raiders, as well as Saskatchewan and Calgary of the CFL and the WFL's Philadelphia Bell. Got to love two WFL references in one show. You don't get that every day. So overall, kudos to Rambo on the accomplishment. He was one of eight inductees Saturday in Billings. The players, the other players inducted were Montana Grizzlies, Dallas Neal, and Colt Anderson, and then Montana State Bobcats, Mike Person and Al Wilson, and MSU Billings. Then Eastern Montana College product, Lynn Ahrens. So congratulations to Rambo and the rest of the Hall of Fame class that was honored by the Montana Pro Football Hall of Fame. One of those accomplishments that lasts a lifetime and well-deserved for a lifetime of hard work in professional football by Rambo and his colleagues that were mentioned. All right, let's check back in on how the Glacier Range Riders have fared the last couple of weeks. The Riders took a little trip on the road to Boise, June 27th through the 29th, and they, hey, they took two games to one over the Hawks, and Dean Miller picked up a knockout round home run in extra innings and one of the wins, kind of the sudden death home run derby the Pioneer League does in extra innings. So that is exciting stuff. So the Riders, you know, got a little series win there, and then they stayed on the road. They took a trip to Missoula. They dropped two of three from the Paddleheads, but the Riders made their way back to the Valley to take two of three and win their home series over the Ogden Raptors. And now, after finishing up a three-game series sweep of the Mustangs and Billings over the last weekend, the Riders are rolling into a six-game homestand with the Idaho, Idaho Falls Chuckers with plenty of momentum on their side. Hopefully I said that right. Chuckers, two cars, I think it's Chuckers. The Riders enter the series at 25-15 and 15 overall and sit at second place in the Pioneer League North. So, overall... You know, this is a good time for the Riders to keep building some momentum. After their six-game set with Idaho Falls, the Billings Mustangs are coming to the Valley for a three-game set. So the Riders are going to be home all the way until July 20th. This is a great time for the Range Riders to keep that train rolling. Also a great time for all you Valley baseball fans to get out to Glacier Bank Park with a nice lengthy homestand and some baseball weather here with clear skies lately. I did say a little rain earlier today, but we've had these nice sunny days. Got to drink a lot of water at the ballpark, but it is baseball weather, no doubt about it. So, hey, they're going to be in town for quite some time. Going to have a chance to watch the Riders play. And like I said, they're 25-15. and 15, They're second place in their division. The team's rolling. They have a solid core group of guys, a few new faces, and a couple returning players who are really making an impact. I've credited him on the show before, but first year manager Stu Peterson has that train rolling. So, they're looking good as you near that midseason mark. So that's what you want to see out of the riders. It's been a lot of fun to cover and a lot of fun to watch and looking forward to this homestand. So 
That all being said, it was a quick show. That's kind of been the theme this summer. You know, we're waiting for football to gear back up, waiting for prep sports to gear back up. But hey, the action never stops in the Northwest Montana sports scene. So there's been plenty to cover, but just a little bit, a little bit quicker in the summer. All right, that being said, let's wrap this bad boy up. Thank you so much, as always, to everybody for checking out the show. It is much appreciated from yours truly. And thank you to Nomad GCS for the support. It is much appreciated. So everybody out there, from Josh Dugan, you know, I'm out. But make sure you're hydrating. Make sure you're enjoying your summer. Get out there. Enjoy those outdoor activities. Enjoy the local sports scene. Get out to a Range Riders game. It's the time for it. Like I said, stay hydrated, drink lots of water, and have fun out there. All right, thanks as always, y'all. I'm Josh Dugan, and I'm out. Today's episode is brought to you by Nomad, one of the Flathead's best manufacturer. Nomad is a longtime supporter of the local community and sports scene, celebrating 20 years of building great careers and mission-focused custom vehicles. Nomad, a Montana-based company making a global impact. Visit NomadGCS.com for more info. That's NomadGCS.com for more information.